the brain in psychiatric illnesses neurochemistry is simplified for the patient and the patient's family members and caregivers we all know that it is not the heart but the brain that controls our thinking and emotions our brain is comprised of millions of nerve cells called neurons some very small just a few millimeters in length and some very long extending from the brain to the tip of the toe the brain has specified areas which serve specific functions much like an organization that has many departments each having a designated duty for example what we see with our eyes is understood in the back portion of the brain what we smell with our nose or taste with our tongue is understood in this olfactory bulb at the base of the brain our body's muscular balance coordination and posture is regulated in the cerebellum similarly there is a collection of neural tissue referred to as the limbic system which is responsible for our thinking feelings initiative to do anything and contentment when the message transmitting ability of the limbic system is affected any of a whole variety of psychiatric syndromes may occur to understand this let us look at the basic unit of a cell called a neuron a neuron has a cell body and many radiating processes called dendrites and exons which communicate with similar processes of other neurons to give and receive messages no two processes from any nerves physically touch each other there is a physical gap between these processes of nerves that communicate with each other this gap is called a synapse when a message has to be passed from one nerve to the next it reaches the end of the nerve but to cross the synapse help is needed from the nerve terminal end of the first nerve through one of its processes a chemical droplet is released which carries the message across to a process of the second nerve these droplets are referred to as neurotransmitters as the neurotransmitters carrying the message reach the receptors of the second nerve the message is transmitted and the neurotransmitter drops burst there are many different types of neurotransmitters at synapses some serving an excitatory message transfer function others serving an inhibitory function all these neurotransmitters exist at synapses in a particular ratio and proportion with respect to each other when this balance of neurotransmitters is intact one is emotionally and psychologically healthy when this balance is upset psychiatric disturbances result different psychiatric syndromes result depending on which neurotransmitters are in a state of imbalance what psychiatrists try to achieve by giving medication is to stabilize this imbalance it takes between 2 to 6 weeks for the balance of these neurotransmitters to be restored and for patients to feel normal again once normal patients often make the mistake of immediately discontinuing or stopping the medication as they feel well if they stop medication abruptly they may continue to feel well for 2 to 4 weeks more but sooner or later their symptoms reemerge as the balance of neurotransmitters is again upset even after the patients feel absolutely normal they should continue on what is called a maintenance dose for a long enough period as advised by their psychiatrists which may range from 6 months to years to permit long term stabilization and balance of neurotransmitters this duration is decided by the doctor taking into consideration the duration of illness prior to treatment this way a relapse can be prevented for a much longer period in contrast to immediate discontinuation of medication